a cut of bar of soap and a scrubbing brush next to an office that he used these. Down to your bum. When she won Triple J's unearthed music competition while still in high school, Missy Higgins was thrust into the limelight. What followed was a worldwide record deal and a debut number one album, The Sound of White. Because it's been ten days without you in my reach. And the only time I've touched you is in my sleep. Since then, she's earned nine ARIA awards and sold over a million albums. Maybe this is a Missy Higgins' fifth record, Solastalgia, is out this month, but it was at home with her family in Melbourne that she first fell in love with music. I guess my love of music probably developed when I was really young because our dad used to play piano off the back of the house all the time, like there was always the sound of piano wafting through the house. Dave, yeah. you're Missy's big brother. Yeah. When did you notice she had talent? I kind of just knew from a really young age that she was just, you know, she should be really successful. I just knew. I mean, I was young as well and I thought she's going to be famous. Didn't you? Stuff. I have this memory of you coming to watch me and Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> That's right. and And you, yes. And you just looking at me afterwards going, that was really good. You were really good. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being quite... I mean, you were amazing. You did this French accent. So what was the character that you did again? Oh, I don't know. I was one of the brothers. Oh, my. I was oh, wearing, wearing a Hessian sack. I think I was Isaac or something. <laughs> it was so good. I mean, it was a school production, whatever year it was, and, and it was a school production standard until Missy comes on and does her one song. And everyone's just like, whoa, this got taken somewhere. It was, it was really amazing. That was um, year eight, I think. Your latest album is called Solastalgia. How did you come across this word and um, what does it mean? Um, it is a term that was coined by an Australian philosopher named Glenn Albrecht about that feeling of, of sadness when you um, have experienced um, environmental uh, degradation of your homeland over time. So. It's that kind of, it, it's, it's a term, I guess, directly related to, to climate change. I think um, when I was pregnant with my first child, I suddenly kind of became a, like hyper aware of the fact that I was bringing him into this world that was quite unstable. And I suddenly felt so much more responsibility than I had ever felt in my life. <laughs> Everyone's waiting. You've recently signed an open letter speaking out against sexual assault and harassment um, in the music industry and mm -hmm. calling for change. It's called the Me No More campaign and it's like mm -hmm. an Australian extension of the Me Too campaign. Other artists like Courtney Barnett and Tina Arena have also signed. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced harassment in the industry? Um, I haven't experienced sexual harassment in the music industry. Um, I have in other areas of my life. Um, but I've definitely experienced um, intimidation and um, general disrespect. Um, I think the music industry, uh, along with obviously a lot of under other industries, but it's very male dominated and there's... Um, you know, there's a bit of a boys club that goes on sometimes. And I've experienced lots of times, um, you know, being talked down to and being kind of sniggered at and being kind of um, made fun of behind my back because I tried to speak up and tried to say things about, you know, the sound not being quite right or basically just being assertive like, yeah. like anybody should be in my position. Um, but it just, it just wasn't treated um, with the, the same respect that a man would be if, if um, he'd said the same things. Yeah. But I know that a lot of women have experienced sexual harassment in, in this industry and the, the general creative industry. So yeah. it's, um, it's a great thing that we're tackling it now.
Dave, have you felt protective of Missy over the years? I have on a few occasions, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, when you've got, when I guess when, you got, when you're famous, you sort of, a lot of the people that you wouldn't usually approach in a public place would often come up to, to the famous person. And there have been a few occasions where I've had to pick you up and carry you away. And I remember everyone... you said something to me like, if, if, if anyone, if any guy ever does anything to you, remember his face, I'll find him, <laughs> track him down and I'll kick his knees in. That's right, when you're young I told you to go straight to the, oh the neck. Oh God, I remember thinking that was so graphic. <laughs> so Actually, cool. yeah. I taught you to beat he's up not, boys. He's not a violent guy either. <laughs> So but there is a protective thing. I remember when you were a little kid and I just, um, I remember you just, I taught you to beat up boys. And then you started getting in trouble for beating up boys at school, at yeah. um, primary yeah. school. They didn't mess with me. Missy and Dave, thank you so much for talking to yeah, some no ladies. Thank you. No problems. Thanks a lot.